All right, let's take a look at leak code 1406 stone game three. I think this is an incredibly good problem. It's a DP problem. And I think it's a, it's a golden standard of DP problems, to be honest with you. Um, you know, you can start with a naive um, backtracking approach and then you can create a um, cache to, to cache your results and then you can turn it into, you know, a DP memorization. You know, still top down and then from the recursive top down you can optimize that even more and turn it into a iterative bottom up um, DP so this is just a, a great uh, full application of DP and um, yeah I want to walk you through the English algorithm and help you understand how to uh, how to how to uh, see the recurrence relation and, and be able to understand the the DP aspect um, I have both the answers to the recursive solution and the iterative solution. Um, you can see that later and you can check my GitHub for that as well in the description. But um, yeah. So the problem is as follows. So we're given a list of values, you know, stones. And so there's two players, Alice and Bob. Alice goes first always. And then it's Bob and then it's Alice. Alice and they, they just keep alternating after that. So we want to see who is the winner here. And so, uh, so they tell us how the scoring works. So at each turn, you know, Alice or Bob's turn, that player can has three choices. They can either take one stone, they can take two stones, or they can take three stones. And the score of that turn is just the sum of the stones that they take, right? So if they take just one stone, they have one point. Uh, if they take these two stones, then they'll have three points. If they take all three, if they take three stones, then they'll have six points. Right, so we want to, um, at the end, we want to see who is going to win, and it tells us that both players are going to play optimally. So, um, basically, what that means is each player is, is, you know, going to try to maximize their their possible score at each turn. Um, yeah. So I guess it's pretty straightforward if if all the numbers are positive, um, because then we can just greedily, you know. You know the best choice at each turn is always just to take all three stones you know take as many stones as, as there are possible right Let, let's just do this first example here and see um, how this plays out so Alice goes first so you know her best choice is to take um, all three stones here and she'll get a, a, a total score of six and then Bob will be left with just this one stone here and he'll take that and get seven so Bob wins in that situation what are the other choices that Alice has Alice could have also just taken one stone, and then uh, Bob probably would have just taken the rest of them and, and won by a crushing margin. Or Alice could have started off by taking these two, and then Bob would probably just end up, you know, taking these two as well and then winning by a crushing margin. So um, in in all of these situations, Bob is the winner. So, um, but it does tell us that. Alice and Bob play optimally, right? So so out of these three options that Alice has, she's going to choose the option which, um, you know, benefits her the most, right? So she's going to, we know for a fact that she's going to take three stones and then uh, Bob will be left with just the seven. So, so even when Alice plays optimally by taking these first three stones, she still loses. Um, yeah, so let's also, let's look at another example with, with negatives. So this is a case where we can't just do a greedy approach and, and take the first three stones, um, right? Because let's let's see what happens if Alice takes the first, all three stones, right? If she takes all three stones at once, then she'll have negative six and Bob will be left with zero. Bob's score will have not changed. Bob will be at zero and Alice will be at negative six. So Bob wins. Let's see... Let's see how Alice can optimize this first turn. She can actually just take the first two stones and, and be left with a negative three score. And then Bob will also pick up the last stone, which is negative three. So in this scenario, when Alice takes just the first two stones, then they, they have a tie. Let's, let's check the last option. If Alice takes um, the negative one, um, then Bob will just take the negative two and then Alice will be forced to take the negative three in the last turn. So this situation Alice loses because Alice has negative four and Bob has negative two. So the optimal turn for Alice is to take the two stones. Right? So that's how we end up with the answer of a tie. So 
we can see that greedy won't work because you can't just you know blindly take you know all three stones at, at every given turn right because there's negative values and it could be worse for you um, and um, yeah so and also you can't necessarily just take uh, the, the the least amount if it's all negatives right right because the best option here it looks like it would be negative one but then Bob could also just only take one stone and then force Alice to take the last stone right so we have to we have to explore every path to the end so so that's why dynamic programming is the approach here we can't just greedily you know compare these stones and say oh we're gonna take uh, the stone piles that add up to the the most uh, the max value that, that that doesn't work because uh, we have to alternate turns and we have to yeah I mean there's too many paths to explore and um, dynamic programming is the only way to do this so let's uh yeah so okay let me think about where to even start with this so let's first um, kind of visualize this as a tree right so basically at any given um, at any given turn that player has three choices like I said they can take just the first stone um, they can take just the second they can take the first two stones or they can take the first three stones and um, the reason you see this minus you know this minus f of two three seven what this is expressing is basically um, the sub problem of two three seven um, so pretty much if Alice were to just take the first stone then the way that you would account for um, what Bob is going to take is by subtracting the sub problem at two three seven and um, yeah okay so let's let's first kind of define the DP um, table and it's just going to be an array, it's not a table, but let's define what dp of i represents. So at each dp index, dp of i is going to store the best difference, aka Alice minus Bob. And uh, the, the reason we do Alice minus Bob is because Alice always goes first. And um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I guess that, that's the only reason you would store Alice versus minus Bob as opposed to the other way around. And um, if you did the other way around, I don't, there's no way it would work so um, yeah and what the I stands for is um, if if the list of stones were to start at that index um, so if we started at index uh, let's say this is this is index 3 right so the answer to DP of 3 um, DP of 3 is representing the list of stones from 3 until the end of the list so it would just be 7 so DP of 2 would represent the list of stones from three to the end and then you know yada 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 like dp of one would represent the best answer for um, the stone two three and seven okay so let's take a look at um, let's take a look at an example here and then I think I'll try to um, kind of revisit this uh, recursive tree and, and show you uh, you'll have a better understanding of this tree once I go through this quick example here so um, right so like I said DP of 2 is going to represent the best answer um, if the list of stones was just 7 to the end right and, and that's just the stone 7 so um, let, let's write this out right so so what's the best score that Alice can get you know the best difference between Alice and Bob's score um, if the list of stones was just seven right Alice only has one choice in this situation she she has to take this one stone right you know her three options at every turn are either take one stone take two stones or take three stones and if there's only one stone then she has to take it so Alice has a score of Alice has seven and Bob has zero um, yeah if Bob doesn't take anything then his score is just zero so the difference is so the best difference between them is seven and um, that's why for this DP at two we're gonna write seven here and um, yeah so now let's move on to um, if the if the list of stones was six seven so let's see the uh, different choices so Alice can either take the first stone and then Bob takes the seven 
or Alice can take both stones at the same time and then Bob has zero. So let's write these two options out. So Alice can take, so Alice takes six and then Bob takes seven. So that difference is negative one, right? Because um, Alice has a score of six, Bob has a score of seven. So Alice minus Bob is negative one. Let's see the other situation. Alice takes six plus seven. So, so Alice has 16 or, or 13 and then Bob has zero. So then the difference is 13, right? 13 minus zero is 13. So at each given turn, right, we want to play optimally. So Alice is going to choose the option that gives her the best difference, the, the maximum difference. So she's going to choose this second option. So she's going to take these two stones at the same time, and her difference is 13. So the answer to this subproblem is 13. So DP of one is 13. And then let's see, um, if the list of stones was five, six, seven, then how would we express this? So Alice can take just the first stone. So so Alice has a score of five, and then um, so then Bob is left with six, seven, right? So what what is Bob's best choice here? Well, we actually just calculated the best you know answer for um, if the list of stones was six, seven, right? That was our previous subproblem that we just solved. So we already know from the previous subproblem that the best answer. The, the, back, the max score for, for a list of 6, 7 is 13. So Bob is going to have 13. And so the difference between these two is negative 8. So 5 minus 13 is negative 8. So then let's look at the, the other option. Alice can take two stones. So 5 plus 6 is 11. So she has 11. And then Bob is left with just this 7. So Bob is going to take that. So then Bob has 7. And the difference between them is 4. Right. So then let's look at the third option. So Alice can take all three. And if Alice takes all three, she has 18. And then Bob has zero. So then the difference is 18. So you can see here that out of these three choices, Alice is going to choose the best one for her. And that's the one which gives her the difference of 18. So she's going to choose that. And her answer at DP of zero is 18. So you can kind of see now, going back to this tree, why we have to do one minus the subproblem here, right? Because, uh, um, like I said earlier, like in this example, when Alice takes just the five, then um, the best option for Bob is, uh, you know, w you know, the best option for the list of just six seven is uh, the is stored in the DP that we just calculated before that. Um, so. Yeah, so that's what this expression here is. Basically, uh, you know, it's going to return the answer of the best possible difference if the list of stones is two, three, seven. And then same here, um, if Alice takes one and two, the, the first two stones, then she has to subtract the best answer at um, three and seven. And then same here, if she takes the first three stones, then she has to subtract the best answer for the subproblem of just seven. And um, yeah, so you can kind of see how this recursive branching happens. Um, there's three, three different options at each uh, turn. And then we can follow this path down. So then um, for the subproblem of 237, the, the three different options are we can take just the two, and then we have to subtract the subproblem of 37, or we can take the first two and then subtract the subproblem of seven, and then we can take or we can take the first three stones and then subtract um, nothing. Um, yeah, so as you can see, we're doing a lot of repetitive work here. Like we have f of seven here, we have f of seven here, then we have f of three seven here, we have f of three seven here. So that's why we need, we need to cache our answers. And uh, at each recursive call, we can just store our answer in a cache and then check later if we've already come across that. So basically, you know, in a DFS, you know, this this call would get hit before um, this call here. So once we find the answer to this three seven subproblem, then later on, when, once we hit it again, um, we can just find it in our cache instead of having to, you know, you know, do another recursive call and and keep going down. So yeah, that is uh, the recursive. Um, structure and uh, pretty much the recurrence relation here and um, yeah I guess like um, 
it's pretty straightforward if you know there's there's pretty much like th you can kind of categorize the situations into three different situations right if 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 the list of stones if if there's only one stone then obviously the answer to that sub problem is just that stone's value right like if we just have seven then obviously the best difference is, is just seven um, so then the the second situation is if there's two stones actually wait I have all this written out up here so um, yeah when there's one stone Alice's score is just that stone um, it doesn't matter whose it is it's just the best score the best score is just that stone so when there's two stones Alice's score is either um, take both stones or it's stone one minus stone two um, right when we had the uh, when we had the when we had the six seven it was either we we take just one and subtract um, the seven right like like we showed earlier so it's either six minus seven or it's six plus seven um, yeah so if, if there's two stones those are your two options that you have to consider if you have three or more stones then um, then you consider either you know either taking one stone which is just the five and then you minus the um, sub problem of six seven or you can do five plus six and then subtract the sub problem of um, seven or you can take five plus six plus seven and subtract an empty sub problem right so hopefully you can kind of see the recurrence relation now and I hope that explanation is um, helping you and then um, yeah so I guess a couple of things you might need to note are that uh, when you create the DP you will have to allocate one extra space at the end um, and, and that way you know when you're at an empty um, um, so let's say you, you have six seven um, you, you're you're looking at six seven and then you can either Okay, forget that. I don't know how to explain that, but just just know that you'll have to allocate one extra spot for the DP. I can't really think of how to explain that on the spot now, but um, yeah, play around with that. Play around with the DP. Um, let me think. Is there anything I'm missing? That this is a a pretty heavy problem, and um, yeah. So so at the end, you will have to actually right. So so DP of zero is going to store our best answer. You know the best difference if the list of stones started at index zero, which it does, right? Um, so then, if our DP, if our DP of zero is greater than zero, then that means Alice minus Bob was you know a positive number. So that means Alice had more points than Bob. If DP of zero is less than zero, then that means you know Bob won. If DP of zero is equal to zero, then it's a tie. So, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully you can understand that. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think I did as best as I can, as best as I could to explain that. Hopefully, hopefully you guys understood that. Hopefully you guys learned something from that. All right, um, I guess. Uh, yeah. So also the with with DP the uh, the um, runtime will be O of n. You'll just be looking at. Uh, each number once, I believe. I believe. I mean, it's just a single for loop, and then you're refer referencing your um, your DP table um, each time. Um, yeah. So so O of n runtime and space also O of n because you just have a DP allocated. Um, yeah. Uh, that was a that was a half decent explanation. Hopefully, hopefully it was good. Please give me some feedback. I really appreciate all feedback. Um, yeah, all right, thanks for watching.